Hey guys, what's up? It's your good buddy Sam, and um, what's going on today is I wanted to try a little experiment. Uh, so basically, a couple of weeks ago, I tried to, uh, rather, I'm sorry, I watched this video by Brett Victor, uh, who did a video called Coding on Principle, and in it, he shows how if you're able to see data flow through your application, uh, how it helps you write the programs better, faster, um, and more creatively, most especially more creatively. And the whole time I'm watching this, I'm thinking, well, this is great and all, but this program exists. It's called Max MSP, and it's been around for years. Um, so basically what I wanted to do is put up or shut up. That, uh, that if I can use Max according to the principles that he outlines. And then if not, I wanted to see, uh, think about what could, what could be changed in Max to make things work. So what I'm gonna do today is do, I'm gonna do binary search in Max. Could be, could work out really well, could work out really poorly. Either way, I'm gonna see if I can't do it. We've got our programming music going. Um, I've had like eight cups of coffee and surely we're gonna be able to make this work. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna do it live and I'll set up a timer here so we can see how long it actually takes me. And hopefully this will be um, interesting and worthwhile. So let's set up a timer. Okay, so up here we've got minutes and seconds. Okay, just set up a little timer here to track our progress, minutes and seconds. Binary search and max. So the basic idea is on the left, we've got a list, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12. And on the right, we have a number, say 6. We want to know if that number is in the list. Uh, let's see, and the basic idea is we take that number, we look at the middle of the list, we say, okay, if that number is um, smaller than that um, middle number, look in the uh, right half of the list, and if that number is bigger than the middle number, then look in the left half of the list, the smaller half of the list. Um, and it's important that this list is already sorted, otherwise binary search won't work. So I'm just going to start by uh, deciding that we're not going to handle, I don't know, how do we handle an empty list? Because um, Max doesn't have a representation for an empty list, I think, except maybe a bang. It's called a bang an empty list. Um, okay, so the way that I think we, the basic idea is there's three cases. If the list is empty, return false. Let's make a bang an empty list. And if the list is not empty, do some other stuff. And um, does this work the way I expect? Hmm, select doesn't work that way. Oh, crap. Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, oh, awesome. Okay, route bang is going to handle it. Great. Okay, figured it out. So, empty list detection is route bang. That's fine. It's a little bit not what we wanted, but okay. So, let's start with our base case. So, the list is empty, route bang, and we return false. So, we're going to do um, zero if it's in the list and one if not. So, in the simple case, um, we're given the empty list and we'll send our output here. Uh, comment output. It's already taken me five minutes. This is good. So far, so good. Print result. And we'll send that through here. And just for cleanness, we'll do send res. Our res. So we don't have patch cords all over the place. Okay. Now, supposing the list is not empty. Um, well, in that case, the first thing we need to do is take the list and split it into three parts. Um, the first half, the second half, and, um, okay, so let's look at this. See all that length? Through that, we need to get the length of the list. This is, okay, so if the list is length one, and we go through and we slice it in half, what's going to happen? Okay, we get nothing out our left and left. Hmm. That's not totally what I wanted. Uh, so this should be one for a list of length one. Awesome is, and then we'll throw an integer box down here. So it'll always be an integer, great. And now we're slicing the list in half and a five comes out. Five and nothing. Okay, cool. So we'll know that the first half of the list will always be bigger than the next half of the list. Um, hmm. See all dot nth of the length of the list will give us the last element of the list. The three things that we need are the first half of the list, second half of the list, and the middle element. 
and um, we've got that right here. So in other words, given any list, uh, this should give us the second half, this should give us the oops, middle element, and this should give us the first half of the list. So let's make sure it works. One, two, three, three, four. One, two, two, three, four. Awesome. One, three, five, thirteen, forty-five. Great. And one, three. Cool. Okay, so what we do is we look at this middle number here and we check against the input value here. And depending on which one of these is true, we do something else. This doesn't look exactly ideal, but okay, whatever. I mean, the basic idea is you want to do one of three things depending on um, the relationship between this argument here, what we're searching for, and the middle element of the list. And this is the best way I know of doing a three way branching computation. Um, Okay, so in any case, we shoot this guy um, into each of these, and that will open or close one element of the gate. One thing that I'm anticipating being a problem is that when you slice a list um, of, say, length one, yeah, you don't even get a bang out here. You just get nothing. Shit. Okay, we may need a special case for when the length of the list is one. This is already getting like really, really messy. Too bad. Okay, so if the list is uh, length one, then return just whether or not this number is equal to this number. And send res. Oh man, that is not looking good. That is looking ugh, oy vey. That is looking. That is looking really appalling. But what's going on there is um, uh, we look at the length of the list. If the list is length one, it's sorry. If the list is length one, we just return whether or not the first element of the list is equal to the number we're searching for, and that's it. So anyway, that co covers that ZL slice problem. So if the number is less than the middle number, that means that we want to look at the right half of the list. We run this thing again using the uh, bigger half of the list. Let's see, here's where we store the bigger half of the list in a register, and then we send this bang to this gate, and we'll bang down here, and that will spit out the bigger half of the list. So let's do a quick test. Um, if the list were six, six, seven, eight, then we would expect that um, the number down here in this box should be um, eight, or rather should be six, uh, because it should split the list in half, see that the middle number is a seven, which is too big, and then ask us to look at the um, left half of the list. So we click this guy, and indeed we get, oh no, we got eight. Hmm, hmm, oh, that's not good. Seven is less than six, really? Oh, cell just doesn't work the way I thought it did at all. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, and the thing I'm looking for doesn't quite exist. Um, um, so, good, six, seven, the first half of the list. Okay, epic. Um, so let's delete some of these. And now we should actually be able to see, just by um, having this intermediate guy here, we should be able to see... Um, what the next step in the computation, the list is going to be at the next step in the computation at every step, which is handy. So if you make our list 1, 2, 4, 6, 13, 23, 2, and we click 6 here and then click this here, let's see, what do we expect? We expect that it will see 4 as being the um, middle item, and it should tell us to look at the next half of the list, which is 6, 13, 22. And indeed it is 6, 13, 22. Now if we push this again, it's down to 613, which is what we expect. We push it again, um, and it's down to just, nope, it outputs zero. Six is not in the list. Um, <laughs> okay, fuck. <laughs> Why did that happen? Um, oh, I see what I fucked up. Um, this shouldn't be here, this should be... Okay, we want to slice it like this. 
but checking whether or not the length of the list is equal to one is something we should actually do before we divide the length of the list by two. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Um, so let's try this again. 613 and the result, the result is one, awesome, it's in the list, cool. Um, so let's just try this, um, trigger list list, print step, and this will tell us what this thing is at a given step. Uh, no, not this. Um, and if you throw this back up here, this should work. Let's try this list and see what happens. So it takes the thing, divides it in half, gets down to here, gets down to here, returns one. Look at that. Awesome. We did it. We wrote binary search. Okay, stop the clock. It took 23 minutes um, with me talking through it, and it looks really, really messy and unreadable. Uh, okay, so this part I'm going to look at how we can clean this up and what we can learn about how Max might be better organized to help us write um, code like this. So, first thing I notice is that this little guy here, the argument what we're looking for, um, needs to be in a whole bunch of different 